Hey, so we're going to be building a serverless API, Lambda API gateway and uh, Dynamo DB. So we'll have our user, they'll make a request. We'll use uh, API gateway, the full CRUD, and then we're going to have a Lambda here to process that. And we're going to store some data inside of uh, Dynamo DB and we'll have a, a IAM role assigned to Lambda allowing us to use DynamoDB and uh, CloudWatch to be able to monitor this. Uh, not too complex of uh, architecture we're going to be building, but very useful to be able to build your own serverless APIs. First thing we're going to be doing is building a new DynamoDB table. So let's go ahead and search DynamoDB. And there we go. And go ahead and click create table. So I'm going to make a table called uh, employee info, partial key. So that's a primary key. So we need to make something here. So we'll make this employee ID. Sort key, we're not going to bother there. I'm going to leave this as is and just go ahead and click create table. Okay, now that we have our DynamoDB uh, created, we have our table, let's make a new Lambda. All right, so I'm in Lambda and we're going to go ahead and click create function. All right, so good. we're going to give our Lambda function a name. Uh, for runtime, we use Python. And then for the default execution role, we're going to create a new role. All right, so we'll have this role serverless API demo, which will add uh, access, full access to DynamoDB and full access to CloudWatch. All right, so that's all we really need here. You can go ahead and click create function. All right, so we have our Lambda function created. If you go down to code to this section here, click on configuration and go to permissions. And you see we have our role name here. So go ahead and click on that. All right, so it opens up that role. And then we have the option here to add additional policies. So click on add permission and then click attach policies. And so we're going to search the ones we need like Dynamo, DB full access, so click that, and we'll get CloudWatch logs full access. And then you can go ahead and click add permissions. So our policies have been successfully attached. Okay, next thing, let's open up API Gateway. All right, for this tutorial, we're going to be using a REST API. So we'll go ahead and click uh, build, click uh, new API. All right, so we're going to be creating a new REST API. So I'll call it serverless demo. Description, I'll leave it blank. And then for endpoint, we're going to leave this as regional. And then go ahead and click create API. Okay, so now we're going to create some resources. First source we're going to name, it's going to be status. And then make sure you check off this uh, course, this one, and right, then click Create Resource. All right, so we have our first uh, first API resource, and we're going to create a method under it. All right, so we're going to do a get method. Right, and then next thing, we need to choose the Lambda. So you'll see under here, We'll see here we have our Lambda function API processing. So go ahead and select that. And then click create method. All right, we're going to create two more resources. Employee. And we're going to create employees. Okay, so for employees, we're going to also make a get. So go ahead and click employees and create method, lambda function. We're going to do get. Once again, we selected our lambda. And make sure you have uh, Lambda proxy integration selected. And then uh, click create method. All 
right, so for employee, we're also going to create another uh, get. Uh, so the idea would be to be able to get one employee versus this getting all the employees, and then this to check the status. All right, also under employee, we're going to add patch to update. So we may want to update an entry. Okay, so we'll create patch and also enable Lambda proxy integrations, create that method. Um, let's also create post. Okay, create that method. So we can enter in new employee entries. And then last, let us create delete. Click create method. And create, click create method. All right, so for employee, we have delete, get, patch, and post. And then for getting all the employees, we just have only get under here. And then for status, we also only have get. So next, we need to deploy this API. So you need to just click deploy API. And then under stage, just click new stage. And then stage, just put new stage. And then put a stage name. And then click deploy. And then down here, you're going to get a URL to invoke your API. So make sure to copy that for later. All right, so we'll go back into our Lambda and open up the code here. We're using a Python runtime, remember? And we're going to build the code to process our API requests and send them to DynamoDB. All right, and to do a quick test of our, um, if our API is actually working up to this point, Let's go ahead and copy this URL. And if you enter in the status like this, and you press run, you'll see that you'll get this output here. Hello from Lambda, which is our just our Lambda function running. Now, of course, we need to actually build out our Lambda function out to process that and send things to DynamoDB, pull things, pull employees, delete employees, update employees, etc. So let's work on that. This is going to be the coding portion now. I'm going to deploy this new code I have. All right, so once you paste this code in, make sure to configure your test event and to just write test here or whatever and click save. So we're leaving this as import JSON. We're going to import uh, Boto3, which helps uh, interact between different AWS uh, services. And then we have uh, variables for our three different um, our three different API resources. So status, res employee, and employees. Then we have our Lambda handler where we put in our make code here and to try this um, HTTP method and then event.get HTTP method. So the first part of this is we're checking if the method is uh, get, post, patch, or delete. And uh, what you can see is basically we have this uh, if else logic and we're checking one, the method, and two, we're checking the path. So for example, if um, the method is get and the path is status, then we'll know to run this uh, status response and we'll say the service is operational. If the uh, method is get and the path is the employee path, then we'll know to, we'll know to get the employee uh, information from that DynamoDB table. And we have this employee ID uh, function that will run. And uh, same thing for get employees. And we have this function that will run if it's get and uh, the employees um, resource path.
if it's a post, then we'll save some inf we'll save the JSON information into our um, employee table. And if it's a patch, we'll update and uh, so on. And if it's none of them, then we just have a 404 error not found. And, uh, and then we have the accept just printing an error as well, and we return our response. So that's the basic idea of this main uh, Lambda handler. Below it, we have several functions. So we have this function for getting the employee, this one for getting the employees from our DynamoDB table. We have one down here for modifying the employees, deleting the employees, and so on. Let's do a quick test just to make sure everything is working. All right, so if we do um, this same um, API half from earlier, and then instead we write uh, status, you can see we get a uh, service is operational. All right, so we're in Postman. I'm going to enter in the URL here. Let's do a uh, post and go to body. Uh, we'll select raw and then for type, let's do JSON. All right, so inside of here, we need our employee ID. All right, and we'll add in a few extra things like maybe a job title, full name, and let's do a salary. All right, so employee ID is required, and we have now um, employee ID 101, job title CEO, full name Bob Swish, and then a salary of uh, 1.5 million. Go ahead and click send. Oh, we need to fix our uh, URL here. So slash production slash employee. Let's try send again. Uh -huh. And then we got a mismatched parameter as well. So we expected a string, but we got back a number. So even though it's a number, make sure to put it in quotes. So we'll put 101 in quotes. And now let's try and send this. All right, so we got a 200 and it's been uh, saved. And uh, yeah, so success. Let's enter in a few more um, people. Let's do uh, We'll give me a salary of 350000 Not my real salary, by the way, but I can put whatever I want here, though. Jason born two with security with a salary of 80,000 and we'll send that. Okay, so we entered in a bunch of entries here and we got status code 200. So it looks like we're all good here. All right, so now let's go back to our DynamoDB. And we clicked uh, Explore Item Names, and you can see that we have uh, three items entered in here now. Uh, one thing you'll notice is, despite me doing multiple entries, on, I used Employee ID 103 multiple times, we only have one Employee 3 ID entry here, which was the most recent one. So that's great. We have our items actually be en being entered in with our API now. Hey, so just a few errors I was fixing. Um, just want to say like CloudWatch is, since we set this up with CloudWatch, it's great for finding errors. So look, I'm in CloudWatch right here. And then you can look at the time. And this was the last time I run. And you can look at the stream here, look through the requests and see uh, any errors that we might've got. Get item that the key didn't match the schema. And there was a typo there. So yeah, this helped me out. Um, I had another issue with decimals. Uh, not to worry, I'm gonna be posting the full code on GitHub. All right, let's go back to uh, to Postman for a second, just go through a few of these other ones. All right, so here's another uh, request. So we go in parameters here, and we're going to do uh, the employee table again. And then we write employee ID. And then you can uh, specify a specific employee ID. So let's do 103 and then click send. And then you see we pull um, the security job title for Jason Bourne 2 with the, his salary. Employees, 
remember that resource. If we send that, you can see we get all of our entries here. Hey, so I was just having some issues with the de delete and um, patch the update methods. Uh, it was just uh, some typos in my Lambda code, all good, that's all fixed. Um, so not to worry, corrected code will be on GitHub. So uh, yeah, let me just show you how to use those now. So last two uh, patch. So you can see we have our list down here, all of our, um, all of our uh, employees and um, typo, it has to be a capital I for this part. Uh, so let's say um, we want to update the employee uh, 102. Uh, next, we need to have a, uh, what's the update key? So you can see from our um, Lambda, it's expecting employee ID, update key, and then the update value here. So uh, in this case, say we want to update salary. And uh, next, we put the update value. Uh, so let's say there were some pay cuts, the company's struggling. So the new salary of the marketing director is maybe um, 140,000, let's say. So, oh, whoops, wrong method, of course. Not employees, we employ, I mean, wrong uh, URL. So. so yeah, this is part of the employee resource. So we'll send that now. And there we go. So we updated the marketing director's salary now. Um, all right, so the last one I have to show you is delete. So uh, maybe uh, the marketing director got, got laid off. Um, in that case, all we have to do is inside of our uh, JSON, we just put the employee ID and then run this. And you'll see right uh, right now, uh, it's been deleted. So uh, if we go back to uh, get and we get all of our employees, you'll see that we only have one employee left, Jason Bourne, because I deleted the others. All right, so that's it. So you make a REST API using CRUD. Thanks for watching. Hope this helped you out. Bye-bye.